Hey everyone, this is an introductory video for the mini project building a big data pipeline on AWS. So before jumping on to what the big data pipeline is, I would like to introduce you to what big data is for both beginners and as well as people who are in the industry. So as the name suggests, big data is a huge volume of data which is either at rest or in motion. So data at rest means the data which is already been stored in the transaction transactional database systems from many years like it's kind of a historical data data in motion is nothing but the real time streaming data which is being captured at regular intervals of times from millions of iot devices from click streams from logs and many other data sources from which we are able to extract the huge amount of data so these two categorizations of data at rest and data at motion can be termed as big data like the data is very huge in volume wherein once we are initially what initially we were not able to extract these kind we don't have enough tools to extract these kind of real time streaming data we only had the sql type of databases the transactional databases wherein we just dump the data into it and and then query on top of it and everything was structured data so nowadays new tools have been developed to actually extract this real time data both in structured as well as semi structured and unstructured formats structured data in the sense it can be like sql transactional data and unstructured data and semi structured data can be uh, like json files xml files csv files and excel files text files flat text files these can be termed as semi structured data and unstructured data can be audio and video files and many other types of files so these kind of different types of data are being captured using the new tools being developed in the market nowadays so we don't want to lose any of the insights which are being generated from each and every part of the data so initially there were no tools to actually extract this data so these all insights one we were not able to extract so nowadays new tools have been developed to actually extract these kinds of different kinds of data so that we can perform analysis on top of it so before we jump into performing analysis once we are able to extract these different kinds of data initially what should be done this huge dumps of data or huge amounts of data which is being captured need to be stored somewhere so for that storage they have introduced a new framework known as hadoop hadoop distributed file system so it is known as hdfs in short which is used to store this raw data as is without any processing so initially we can dump the data onto hdfs which is a distributed file system which which is scalable reliable and fault tolerant so once we dump this raw data which is being extracted from all these data sources so once the data is being dumped then we can actually either clean it or validate it or transform it or generate any kinds of processing or analysis on top of it so this hadoop actually has two parts one is storage which is hdfs and another one is processing which is map reduce framework so i need not introduce you to all this hadoop and uh, hadoop framework for hdfs and map reduce so this can be found anywhere so like with an assumption that we have an initial knowledge of the storage and processing framework hadoop framework so we are moving further like initially the processing of data used to be done in java directly like many of us uh, might have worked in the industry like developing java programs for map reduce and controller services while this hadoop was actually emerging this framework so later on as a time as the time moved on new tools have been developed to actually uh, reduce the stress reduce the programming or reduce the coding and directly a sql based interfaces have been developed on top of this map reduce like hive have have been developed we can directly create a table and do the sql queries on top of it so similarly many other tools have been developed in the market which are open source which are easier to actually get the insights out of the data so the technology is being emerging day by day so what happened the underlying 
anywhere anywhere we take the huge amount of data is being stored only in the hdfs whether it can be local or whether it can be in the cloud so once the data is being stored then new tools have been come up to actually cleanse the data validate the data transform the data like data cleansing is nothing but we can call if the data is not in a proper format it, if it has some special characters if it has some duplicates if it has some data type issues or some outliers so these all can be done using in the data cleansing process this data cleansing process can be done using python or many other open source tools where we can set some standards for actually cleaning up the data so once we have the cleaned data in place like once we remove the outliers or duplicates or um, special characters so once the data is in clean format we can actually have a schema in place where we can validate the data the data validation step now comes into place so we define a schema wherein we validate the schema with the existing cleaned data so that we can find out if there are any new rows or new fields which are being added to the existing schema or uh, any other validation some data type error is there so we can find find out during that validation process wherein we can generate process logs and error logs using python so so this data cleaning and transformations are very uh, data cleaning and validation are an integral part of uh, this uh, data engineering point point of view so once the data is cleaned and validated so the next step is to process the data processing of the data is nothing but directly querying the data or storing the data into a tabular format so once we have the data in the tabular format using the given schema in the raw tabular format then we can be able to perform some etls on top of it or we can directly query the raw data or directly uh, perform some etls on top of it and store it in some other destination system like if we have already the raw data in a hive table we can perform etls and transform it to a processed hive table for example so those etls can include like uh, casting of variables or or extracting some new fields out of the data and calculating the derived fields or many other etls can be done on changing the timestamp values changing the date formats so these are all, these all come under etls so this process of data extracting storing cleaning validating and transforming so this all process can be automated or orchestrated which is known as a data pipeline